President Donald Trump wins Iowa in a landslide. Nikki Haley comes out swinging against Trump and Ron DeSantis. More and more Democrats are turning on old Joe Biden and Capitol Police arrest over 100 people that broke into Capitol buildings today. However, the mainstream media is barely covering the story because they weren't there for Donald Trump. Thank you so much for liking and sharing these videos because it helps me grow as a channel. So thank you so much. I also want to thank Aura for sponsoring this video. Last night, the results from the Iowa caucus confirmed my expectations. Donald Trump walked away with the victory by a wide margin, 51% of the total vote. This is the largest win in Republican Party history in the state of Iowa. If there is one thing I was shocked about, it was that Ron DeSantis came in second place, even outperforming Nikki Haley by two points. Fortunately for Trump, Vivek Ramaswamy uh, has dropped out and gave Donald Trump his full and complete endorsement. Even though Trump beat out DeSantis by roughly 30 points, it's still good news for him uh, because he was able to get ahead of Nikki Haley. But will that be the case in New Hampshire? Now, I want to hear from you. Do you think Ron DeSantis has a chance of actually beating Donald Trump? Uh, after Trump just pulled the largest win in Republican Party history in Iowa? Let me know down below. Just type yes, Ron, or no, Ron, if you don't think he can beat him. After the results poured in, former President Donald Trump gave a victory speech where he seemed to genuinely compliment his competitors. Not only did he call them smart and capable, he applauded them for their performance. While this new tone may sound shocking to some, one CNN anchor easily explained why his tone has changed. He said this was the very first contest, the first one, and he was sending all kinds of signals to Capitol Hill. Just two days ago, he was attacking Vivek Ramaswamy. Tonight, he was praising him. He was using Ron DeSantis' actual name. He was sending a signal to his party that this thing is over. But will the Republican primary just be the beginning? Do you think it's too early for Trump to make friends or does he know that he's going to win this? Also, interesting side note, MSNBC refused to talk about Donald Trump uh, and his victory speech, showing just how biased they are against the former president. CNN was insulting and talked over his speech the entire time, saying all the reasons why Donald Trump is a horrible human being. Now, Nikki Haley, who came in third place, was clearly unhappy with her performance in Iowa. Following her loss, she refused to debate DeSantis again and stated, the next debate I do will either be Donald Trump or Joe Biden himself. DeSantis, who saw an opportunity to get back at Haley, for dodging the upcoming, uh, the upcoming, um, oh my gosh, I just forgot the word, debate, <laughs> the upcoming debate. Um, she, he went to social media and said, I won't snub New Hampshire uh, like Nikki Haley and Donald Trump. I plan to honor my commitment. I look forward to debating two empty podiums in the Granite State this week. Now, what good is it going to do for Ron DeSantis to debate two open podiums? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts down below. All right, a quick word from today's video sponsor. If you Google yourself these days, you're likely to find your private information on public listings. Data brokers are making a fortune selling your information to robocallers, spammers, and others that wish to exploit you. That's why I'm excited to tell you about today's video sponsor, Aura. Aura can identify data brokers that are exposing your info and submit opt-out requests on your behalf. Brokers are legally required to remove your info, but make it nearly impossible to do so. Let Aura handle it for you. You can try Aura for two weeks absolutely free by using my link down below. Aura also does so much more to protect you and your family from online threats. It's easy to set up and you don't have to download multiple apps to get things like parental control, antivirus, VPN, password management, or identity theft insurance, and more. 
With Aura, you get all of this for one affordable monthly price. Don't let these scumbags exploit you and profit off of your private information. Go to Aura.com forward slash Steven right now to start your free two-week trial. I'm going to leave a link in the video description and also in the pinned comment. Seriously, go get your free two-week trial right now. As Democrats become increasingly worried about Donald Trump's growing popularity, Democrat Senator Joe Manchin has now threatened to run for president if Joe Biden doesn't change his extreme progressive Democrat policies. According to Fox Business, Manchin will reiterate this demand to Biden's face in the upcoming days, which will ultimately help him determine if he's going to run for president. According to sources, Manchin's desire to run does not come from defeating Biden, but to keep Trump out of office, which he believes Biden cannot do on his own. Therefore, he must step in and do Joe Biden's job. You don't have to do that. The deep state's going to do everything they can. To, oh, man, this Manchin guy, he's completely clueless. Now, a quick side note. I wish Donald Trump would spend more time campaigning in California since he holds uh, the opportunity to get 55 electoral votes. Everyone says that that state is extremely blue. But as of right now, Donald Trump has a 55-point lead on other candidates uh, with the people of California, which shows that a large percentage of the California population actually wants a strong America first president, not a weak America last president. So with time explaining what uh, Republicans could do for the country, I think they could actually sway millions of votes their direction in California but most people write it off as a blue state that will never change. But I still believe in California. Now, sadly, theft has become so awful and unenforceable that Target and Walmart in certain cities are now locking up socks and underwear to prevent shoplifting. It used to be that they just locked up cigarettes and condoms, but now they have to lock up everyday necessities because crime is so out of control. Now, earlier today, Donald Trump arrived in New York to face a second defamation trial concerning E. Jean Carroll, the woman who accused him of inappropriate assault uh, in New York City many, many decades ago. Now, last week, Trump claimed he would testify by stating, yeah, I'm going to go to it, and yeah, I'm going to explain, I don't know who the hell she is. Even though a jury already concluded Trump was guilty last year in a civil trial, Carroll is seeking to convince a different jury that Donald Trump's 2019 statements, which attacked her credibility, caused her defamation, and now she deserves $10 million instead of $5 million. So she's actually doubled this. So is this about rape or is this about extracting money from somebody running for president? I'm starting to not believe this story at all. Now, the last story was this. Uh, she won her case against Donald Trump, not because he raped her, but, but because he said he didn't rape her. That's what she won on, was him saying he didn't do it, not that he actually did it. And she won $5 million, then he complained about it, so now she's suing him again for $10 million. Okay, now back in the state of Georgia... District Attorney Fonnie Willis's prosecution against Trump continues to run into problems amidst corruption allegations against Willis and her special prosecutor. The newest update is that Willis likely collaborated with the January 6th committee to further her case against Donald Trump. Former prosecutor Sol uh, Weisenberger, or sorry, Weisenberg, uh, reacted to the situation by stating, to me, that's a highly unusual level of specific cooperation. They're using what's supposed to be congre congressional investigation in aid of prosecution. During a Sunday church congregation, Fannie Willis stated, you cannot expect, expect black women to be perfect and save the world. We need to be allowed to stumble. While this statement doesn't directly affirm any wrongdoing, it seems to hint at some type of shortcoming uh, if you ask me. Now, uh, no one's asking her to save the world. No one's asking her to be perfect. And of course, people are going to be stumbling. But when you collaborate with another group to make your case 
and you hire somebody who's had secret meetings with the White House and White House legal counsel, and then you've paid $600,000, and then they leave their wife, and then you're having a secret affair, people start to wonder what the heck is going on in this case against Donald Trump. Now, in Congress, negotiations regarding our national security are still ongoing. Despite a reported stalemate, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan is confident more support for Ukraine will be provided in the coming weeks. Now, hold on. I thought this had to do with our national security. And all of a sudden, he's talking about Ukraine. And where was he talking about this? Oh, at the World Economic Forum, you know, those billionaires in Davos that decide how you and I get to live so that they can do whatever they want. Now, here's what he stated at the World Economic Forum. President Biden is absolutely laser focused on that. We are seeking to get that done in the coming weeks. And in fact, I continue to believe and express confidence that we will, you know, after a lot of twists and turns, ultimately get there. Now, why is President Biden laser focused on giving more of our money to Ukraine and not laser focused on the millions of people that are illegally coming into our country? If you can answer that for me in the comments down below, that would be really, really great. All right. Now, uh, I personally think the World Economic Forum is full of a bunch of evil, power-hungry rich people that seek to control us and lower the human population. But I want to know from you, do you think the WEF is good or are they evil? Uh, if you think they're good, type WEF. And if you think they're evil, type WTF down below. I want to hear from you. Okay, now let me know what you think of this now that new details have come out uh, about the FBI and the Capitol Police on January 6. Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis, and Nikki Haley have all publicly vowed to pardon J6 prison inmates and commute their sentences. Is this a good idea because they were most likely entrapped uh, by the FBI? Or is this a bad idea because it tells people they can go against the government violently? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts down below, please. Now, speaking of protests, did you know that a huge group of protesters broke into the Cannon House office building to protest the Israel-Gaza war? You probably didn't know that because the mainstream media isn't covering this story. The Capitol Police had to arrest over 120 people for trespassing and protesting illegally. Now, my guess is they'll all be back on the street later today because this protest had nothing to do with Donald Trump. Had it had something to do with Donald Trump, these people would be hunted, arrested, and jailed for the rest of their life. But that's uh, what happens when we live in a two-tier justice system. Now, if you didn't see yesterday's show, Grant Stinchfield, uh, you need to go watch that. I'll put it at the end of this show. But we talked about how Republicans are super wimpy in Congress right now. Well, today, Republicans in the House decided to pause arresting Hunter Biden and holding him, him in contempt. They're not sure they want to do this to a president's son. But I guarantee you, if this was the other way around, every single Democrat would have voted to arrest Don Jr., whether he was guilty or innocent. And this just shows why I think Republicans are a bunch of disappointing wimps. Unbelievable. Let me know your thoughts down below. Now, continuous war seems to be a huge theme for President Biden, with the attacks being carried out by the Houthis in the Red Sea. Just after America attacked them and they vowed their revenge, oil giant Shell suspended shipments through the Red Sea. While this may unfortunately end up driving the price of gas at the pump higher, it does seem to be a good idea to avoid this area for now uh, as a Greek ship was attacked and lit on fire earlier today. My gosh, so much going on, right? Now, before you go, I, I just want to remind you that you're amazing. Do not forget that. I believe it. I want you to believe it. If nobody tells you today, I'm telling you, you are amazing. Hey, thanks so much for stopping by, getting your news today. If you wouldn't mind, give this video a like. It helps to 
uh, cast this video wider on YouTube, which really helps the uh, channel to grow. So thank you so much for that. Also, if you are watching these videos and you like them, hit the subscribe button. I would really, really appreciate it. Now, right here is the Grant Stinchfield interview. We go through, this is such a great interview. Go watch it right now because I want him to come back on the show and it's full of really good information. Also, check out that link for Aura down below. I want you to be safe on this crazy Wild West internet. Hey, thanks so much and I will see you on the next video.